Wagwan beautiful people and welcome once again to another episode of Cooking with Nino. What's up guys? I'm here too today because I need to really understand how to make this dish today. So today I'm going to be making codfish fritters or saltfish fritters. My favorite. Some, some people call it uh, uh, fish cake, some people refer to it as akra, whatever it is. All I know is it's delicious. We're gonna give the people what they want, so let's get cooking. So I'm gonna be introducing all the items we're gonna be needing today for our dish. So we've got, over here we've got, uh, well it's codfish, but it's really pollock. So it's a salted pollock, which I find is uh, much cheaper and less expensive than saltfish. We can certainly use that product. We've got our vegetable oil. We've got some all-purpose flour. We've got some scotch bonnet pepper, of course. Uh, some fresh thyme leaves. I've got some black pepper, just a tiny bit of salt. We've got our baking powder here. And of course, we've got our green onions or our scallions. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting our, our pollock, our Alaskan pollock in a pan. Okay, a little mixing bowl we've got here. Okay. You just put both bags in, and I often find that uh, when pe when uh, when people are making codfish fritters or or, um, or saltfish fritters or acra, they generally like to boil their fish. What I like to do is I like to get hot running water going through it. All right, I just get the water nice and hot. And what that's going to do is that's going to remove a lot of the salt as well as going to hydrate the codfish and it's going to make it nice and palatable so you can break it up into pieces and, and work with it a lot easier. Okay, so as we go through and just get this product washed, it usually takes three or four washes with the hot water from the tap to get going. And, it's, and then once it gets going and palatable, we're going to break it up into little pieces. So once we've washed this uh, this uh, saltfish or pollock three or four times, then we just remove as much of the water as we can, and then we just get our hands involved because we're going to go in and start breaking up the pieces. Okay, we want to get it down to just a fine, almost uh, just little pieces of, of fish. So this way, when we uh, make our, our, our fritters or acra, we're going to get little bits and pieces of, of fish in every bite, every morsel will have a piece of fish. So we just kind of break it up. And again, we do not have to boil it. It's not necessary. Just tap water, hot water from the tap is, is plenty to get it all hydrated, get it nice and soft. And what we're gonna do as well is the water that we have remaining in there, we're not gonna pour that water off. We're gonna add our uh, other ingredients to the water and that's gonna get our mixture and our, our um, or acra liquefied, all set and ready. Once we get our, our fish all crushed up in little bits and pieces, still in a little bit of liquid, we're gonna move on over to getting our spring onions or our green onions all sliced up and ready for the batter. Okay, so I'm just gonna take little slices of, they're gonna be making little rings, all right. I'm gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna pour it into the batter as we get gather all our ingredients to get this product all done. And we just take the whole thing all sliced up and we're going to just dump it in the, in the uh, mixture. So once we get the uh, green onions into the mixture, we're gonna go on and move on to our scotch bonnet pepper. Okay, I've got a whole scotch bonnet pepper that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use seed and everything. Now some people may choose not to use the seeds, but I'm just gonna cut them up in little dices, as small as possible. Again, this will help the product because each bite is gonna have a little piece of scotch bonnet pepper, a little piece of green onions, a little piece of fish, a little piece of everything. So it's gonna make each bite and each okra or fritters is gonna taste heavenly. So we've got it all cut up with small dice and we're just gonna dump that right into the mixture. Once I get my fish 
in the mixing bowl. I've got my green onions in the mixing bowl as well as my scotch bonnet pepper. The next item I'm gonna put in is going to be thyme leaves. I've got roughly about a tablespoon and a half of thyme leaves. I'm just gonna throw that in. We're also gonna put in some black pepper. Maybe probably about a tablespoon of black pepper. Just get that in there. I've also got some baking powder. I'm gonna put roughly a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. All right, once we get that going, another ingredient we're gonna be introducing is our betta pak curry. We're gonna put some betta pak curry in this. And this is gonna add not only flavor, but it's gonna add a lovely color to our finished product. So I'm gonna put in, let's see, we've got a teaspoon, maybe about a teaspoon and a half. Teaspoon and a half of betta pak curry. Gonna get that in there. We're gonna just give it a little stir. And by the looks of things, we're gonna need some more water in this, okay? But before I add the water, I'm gonna put in my flour, all right? If you take a look at the color here, it's, it's got a nice yellow color, which is gonna produce a nice golden brown product. All right, so I'm gonna add my, my flour to the mixture and then I'm gonna add some more water to get the mixture and the batter nice and smooth and ready for frying. I'm putting the whole thing in. It's actually a two pound bag of all purpose flour. And I'm just gonna get everything incorporated. And one of the key one of the keys to coming up with a successful product is once you get your batter going, it's very important to sample your batter. What I mean by that is you're gonna drop a couple pieces in the hot oil and you're gonna get that all fried up and you're gonna taste it for flavor, for texture, before you start getting the larger batch prepared. You're just gonna get a couple pieces prepared and I will tell you whether or not you need to adjust your seasoning or you need to adjust your baking powder or any other ingredients that you may need. We're just incorporating everything into our batter. And as you can see, the nice, lovely yellow color that we're, we're getting from our, our fish cake, our fritters, or acra. But uh, the only thing here is the batter is still a little thick. So I'm gonna be adding some more water. Cause I wanna get a nice, runny consistency. Let's fill another one here just in case. We just have it on standby. I need to add some more. And we just gotta be very slow and gentle with our mixing process till we get everything incorporated. Then we can kind of speed things up a little bit. So we're almost there. We're almost at the consistency that we're looking for. It's still a little, just a wee bit thick. I'm gonna drop a little bit more water in there. So all together, I think I may have roughly about, uh, let's say about four cups of water in total. But again, it's all about the consistency. Pouring roughly about, I would say maybe just a cup of oil in the pan, okay, in getting preparation to get our sawfish fritters all set. And one of the tools I've got uh, to use is I've got a small little ladle, which I'm just gonna get a little bit and just drop a little dollop all over the oil. Okay, but for now, I'm just making a sample, just so we can try the sample and see whether or not I need to add any more ingredients to our sawfish fritters. But you can't just start rolling too much. Okay. Is the oil hot? It's not quite hot yet, but you're just, you're just a piece of work. I'm sending this to TMZ when you guys get a million dollars. So I'm just gonna be dropping just a little dollop Okay, and these are just amazing for dinner parties or, you know, any sort of gathering where you've got a lot of people because you can actually get this batter prepared way ahead of time and the day of, uh, just 
mere hours or an hour prior to your guest arriving, you can just start doing this. So we'll start off the burner, but we've got to turn it down. It's got to be turned down to about a medium temperature because these things, they will get going very quickly. You don't want to have a pot full of burnt offerings. Okay, so we'll just get just a little bit in there. And we're just gonna monitor those. We've got a little fork here. I'm gonna be flipping them. Okay, just kind of give them a little touch, ease them off the bottom so they don't stick. If you've got a non-stick pan, then that'll be absolutely perfect. All right, so there we go. We're just gonna get them going. Our saltfish fritters are just gonna nice up and get going. We're gonna get them fried golden brown. I've also got a little plate set aside here with a piece of paper towel. Once they come out of the oil, I'm gonna drop them on the paper towel. They can soak up any little extra oil that's in, okay? As you see here, they're getting nice and golden brown. And we're just gonna give them a little flip. Mmm, that looks good. Absolutely. And you generally get the first batch in. You might get the color a little bit off simply because the oil is hot. Until you've actually set your oil temperature to the correct once you gauge it and you kind of play with your dial and get it set up perfectly. But as you can see, those are puffing up nicely, they're frying nicely, and they're absolutely amazing snacks. And how long should they be in the oil for? Well, it all depends. We're looking for a golden brown consistency. Okay, so when you have it on the first side, you'll kind of get an idea when you look at it and see how far in the frying process has taken place. You flip it over, you know, you get the other side golden brown, and we're all set to go. Now, there's a question I've been dying to ask. Ask away. Is it called saltfish fritters or saltfish flitters? Well, in Jamaica, we call it saltfish fritters. So know yourself, people, it's saltfish fritters, even though other islands, like I said, may refer to it as other things. It is saltfish fritters in Jamaica, all right? Or fritters, all right. So we're just taking our time here. We're gonna get them nicely golden brown. And again, guys, this is our sample pack. So we're just gonna, they're almost done. We're talking maybe another 10 seconds. I'm gonna turn the burner off and we're gonna take them out and we're gonna have a taste. So just make sure you have your paper towel all set up. Okay, you get your, 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 uh, your tools of the trade all set up and get ready. I'm taking these ones out now. As I take them out, shake off the excess oil, and just put them on top of our paper towel. Look at that, just beautiful color, beautiful golden brown color. So we've got our sample pieces all set. We've got six pieces of sample. And I'm just gonna dig in and taste, but before I do that, a quick little accompaniment is a product called a soil chutney. I picked this product up in a supermarket in Jamaica, I'm sure it's in other islands, but that's a great accompaniment with your saltfish fritters. So I'm just gonna grab- and Soil chutney really is kind of like a jam or a mint jelly that you would put on lamb, it's really good. So I'm gonna grab one of these and try it away. That sounds crunchy. Mm. So judging by the fact that all of my sample, all six pieces have disappeared and disappeared very quickly, the spicing is just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So now I'm about to make a full batch of the saltfish fritters. All right, once again, you just get yourself a small ladle. You drop a little dollop in the hot oil. And I've got the stove turned down to medium, so I don't want to burn this product, okay? But uh, just bear in mind as well that even though I use two pounds of flour, it's up to you the amount that you use. You can use one pound and just to adjust the recipe and the taste as you go along. Okay, just gotta drop them in. And keep in mind as well that if you're serving this at a dinner party, you're not gonna have a single soul at that party just having one. From my experience, you know, people are having six, seven, eight, ten. It's it's a non-stop thing. A matter of ten. fact, oh absolutely. Absolutely. When I get the boys over to play poker, 
one of the things they say to me is that they're not coming by unless I have saltfish fritters. So I have to make sure I have this because that's also a good way to take all their money. Get them all eat up and stomach is all filled on saltfish fritters and then I just win the hands. So we just adjust the stove as we go along. All right, just turn it up just a little bit more. Starting to turn nice and golden brown. So again, just adjust your, your uh, recipe as you go along, as well as, you know, initially we talked about the washing of this, the salt fish or the pollock. And the reason for that is just to remove all the excess salt because it is a cured and salted item. So that's our way of removing all the excess salt. Um, we leave the last bit of water in there because we want to leave some of the salt in there so we don't have to have any added salt, but we incorporate and marry a lot of flavors together. Together, and as you know, I'm very big on marrying flavor. And this item is absolutely scrumptious. Just gonna give them the first flip. Flipped over, get the other side all golden brown, and mm, mm, mm. now once these things start cooking, everybody comes running because the saltfish fritters are and, a and, and not favorite. only do they come running, but I can't cook them fast enough. <laughs> so, are you standing in line waiting for a fritter, young man? Yeah, mommy, they smell too flitters on you. <laughs> flitters are fry. Flitters, fritters, salt fish are gone good. They look so good and they're so crunchy. Everybody loves these things. They're almost like, I don't know, fish balls or little croquets that you can get sometimes at restaurants on the appetizer menu. But this is Jamaican fritters. Right? This is fritters. I remember one, years ago, uh, Super Bowl in the US. We're down in New York for Super Bowl. And I couldn't make these things fast enough. The, the more I'd make it, the more they would eat. And they would just gobble them up. And I left there with people calling me wanting the recipe. So you guys, you've got the recipe. Let me know how yours turn out because I enjoy these. Okay. They look just about ready. Just about ready. One last little flip a -roo just to get them a little. And the stove right now is on what about? Oh, we've got it at a around. A medium. Yeah, just because you don't want them too the stove too high because they'll burn. Because I I tend to burn these things. That's when you cook them. Ah, Which is never. <laughs> Yeah, she's not the best cook in the world, I tell you, but she sure loves eating these. So we just shake off all excess oil and we just put them down in a piece of paper towel. We'll soak up any excess there is and voila, there we go. I'm gonna grab the first one, I'm just gonna put on the plate. I'm also going to grab a little bit of our sorrel chutney, which I mentioned to you earlier, and just put a little bit on my plate. And let me tell you, this is awesome. And you know what I do sometimes as well, gang, is that the same sorrel chutney I use at uh, Christmas or at Thanksgiving time instead of cranberry sauce. It is absolutely amazing. Come on, dig in, dig in, dig in, dig in. Yes. Ooh, How does it taste? It's hot. <laughs> you know it's hot when the words are not coming forth. Mm, it tastes like. That's what it tastes like. <laughs> mm. Lovely. I love this. With, with the chutney or without the chutney, they're absolutely delightful. And they're hot. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Nino and enjoy these codfish, saltfish fritters. And I certainly would love to hear from you to know how yours turned out. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. 
and we would love to see you back on other episodes. So you take care now. Bye for now.